Welcome back, everyone. This is Brian. We're going to continue our journey on Python 3, and we're going to continue with basic string operations. Now, when I said strings are complex data types, I was not joking, and there's no way we can cover everything in these little two videos, especially because we haven't even covered the fundamental logic of programming, so we have to stick with the basics for now. Don't worry, later on in this series, we are going to revisit some of the more advanced things we can do. But right now, you have to learn to crawl before you can walk. So let's start crawling. I'm gonna say variable str is going to be hello world, this is a string. Very, very simple. And we're gonna start off with here. So what we're gonna do in this video is we're going to do things like getting the length of the string repeating the string, replacing characters and things of that nature, and even slicing them and getting the specific indexes or positions within the string. Let's dive into the basic operations. So first things first, let's say we want to get the length. I'm going to say print. We're going to call the len function, which is not limited to just strings, but it is super, super handy for strings. And we are going to, you guessed it, just print out a comment here get the length. We run this, we can see this is 30 characters long. Now you might be inclined to say, no, wait a minute, it's a zero based index, so it's actually 29. No, it actually gets the length, not the position. That's fundamentally different as you're gonna see later on. So now that we've got the length, we can do other things as well. Well, let's say we want to repeat a string and this is gonna hurt your brain just a little bit here. We've talked about how you cannot do mathematical operations with a string. Remember, we were trying to add an integer and a string together. Well, you can do what's called string math, and this is what I mean by it. it's going to hurt your brain. We're going to say str times 3. Now, I know what you're thinking. You're thinking you're going to get some sort of weird thing because you're trying to multiply, but actually what you're telling Python to do is take the string, and you guessed it, multiply it by three and return a giant string. Let's demonstrate. Hello world, hello world, hello world. So it did exactly what we thought it would do here. Yes, the first time I did that, I kind of sat back in my chair and went, wait, what, is that right? But it is actually a thing with Python. If you're coming from another language, you're probably sitting there just staring at your screen going, what witchcraft is this? But it's actually super handy if you need to repeat a string. Now let's go ahead and let's look at replacing. And if you're coming from another language, well, this is exactly what you think it is. It is just dead simple. So in Python, strings are a data type, but they're also a first class object, meaning they have functions built right into them. We haven't really covered functions yet, but just know you can say your variable name dot and then call some code. And we're going to call the replace function. And what this is going to do, it's going to take the string and replace a section of it. So let's say I want to replace hello with um, hola. So if you're from Mexico or Spain or any Spanish speaking country, that would be the correct way of saying hello is hola. I'm probably mispronouncing that, but you get the point. You can simply replace it. So hola world, this is a string. Makes it super simple to do that. You don't have to figure out where things are. You can also do something like split a string. So if you're coming again from another language, you've done this before, and I'm gonna say str, I want to split. And notice how it's looking for a separator here. So let's go ahead and split this on that comma. If you're not coming from another language, you're like, wait, 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 slow down, what is splitting? So we're gonna take this string and turn it into two strings. And we're looking for a separator value, in this case, this comma right here. So it's going to say, hello world, and then this is a string. And it's gonna give us two strings back. Here we go. Hello world, and this is a string. Now you may be going, now wait a minute, this comma's here. Look at these little brackets. You got this end bracket, this beginning bracket. What it's done is it's created a data type we haven't talked about yet, but we will in the next few videos. And it's put two strings into that data type and then handed it to us. Very convenient way of saying, hey, split those up. As you go on programming, you're gonna actually use that quite a bit. Now, let's say we wanna know if this starts with something. So I'm gonna say str 
And I want to say starts with. Does it start with the letter H? I'm almost embarrassed to type that comment starts with because it's pretty self-explanatory what it's doing, but just in case, it's going to return a bool and it's going to tell us, hey, yes, it does. If we switch this to like J, does it start with the J? Alts. Very simple, handy way of determining what's going on. We can, through the magic copy and paste, switch this to ends with. And let's say we want to make sure this ends with an exclamation. True, true. There we go. And let's go ahead and look at uppercase, lowercase, and capitalization. We're just going to say print. And we want upper. And it's going to give us hello world. This is a string all in uppercase. You notice how it's got these brackets here, and that's because it is a function. If we omit those, we're going to get a built in upper of string object and then this number. If you ever see something like this, basically what you're trying to do is call a function without its brackets, and you need those. If you're wondering what this number is, that's a location in memory. So an object is simply something that exists in memory, and that's its location. So admittedly, this message is not super helpful for beginners, but I just wanted to explain what that was. I'm going to round this out. We'll say lower, and I want to capitalize. So now we have all uppercase, all lowercase, and capitalize the way it should be. Let's take a look at slicing. And when I first heard this term, I actually had like this vision of whipping out a lightsaber and slicing something in half. And it's actually not far off from what we're talking about. We're talking about getting a substring. Now, when I say a substring, remember, this string is just a series of characters. And each one is at a position. So the zero would be here, and then one, and so on, and so on, and so on, and so on. So what we want to do is get a substring, or a slice. Think of it like you have a pie in front of you and you're going to get a slice of pie. You're not taking the whole thing just apart. So for example, I could say I want the word world or I want just th out of the word this or this specific space. Or I wanted to get everything in the end up to that point. You can do things like that very, very rapidly in Python. And this, if you're coming from another language, I'm going to tell you is extremely cool once you wrap your head around it. So we're going to say print. And we're going to take our variable. Now we're going to put those brackets there. That indicates we're getting a slice. The format here is very simple. We want the start, a colon, and an end position. So the start position in this case, we're going to say the zero or the starting position. And we're going to end in five. And what this is going to do is it's going to get the first five. This is a zero based index. Let's print this out and see what happens here. One, two, three, four, five. Hello is five letters. There we go. So it did exactly what we're trying to do here. Like I said, it looks a little confusing at first, but once you start wrapping your head around it, it's not super hard. Now I want to start at the sixth position and I'm going to omit the ending. And what we're doing here is we're saying we want to get from the sixth position all the way to the end. So when you omit something, it automatically defaults to the beginning or the end, depending on which one you omit. So the sixth position would be, you guessed it, world all the way over here. Ta-da, works as expected. Let's go ahead and grab this and let's try something a little bit different. We're going to start at negative seven. Now you may be going, wait, what? Negative. How can we have a negative seven? Well, when you have a negative, you actually start from the end. So because we're starting with a negative, it's going to start back here and count backwards. Actually pretty cool how that works. So let's run this. And the last seven is string exclamation. Pretty, pretty cool. Um, try doing that with some other languages and some are going to be very cool. Some are just going to completely infuriate you depending on the language. And now let's get a substring. We're going to say from 6 to 11. And we want to get 
6 to 11 just for our notes here. See what that looks like. And it is the word world. Very cool, very simple, very easy. Now, if you're coming from another language, you're probably still stuck on this right here. Don't worry. Whenever you see that negative symbol, just think you're starting from the end and working backwards. Now, slicing is cool and all, but it's not super helpful unless you can actually automate the way of getting the number because no one wants to sit here and count things, right? So let's look at how to get the index or the position of something. What I'm going to do is I'm going to hmm, say L equals. And we're going to look for the comma. Now, if we look at our original string, we've got this comma right here, but we don't know the position it's at. So I'm going to hide that off the screen and we just want to know, hey, we want to look for this. We're going to do it two different ways. We're going to say C equals str find. This is what I love about Python. It's very, very intuitive. Find does exactly what you think it would. It finds something. It's going to tell us what we're looking for is the L. It's going to tell us where it's at. Or if it doesn't find it, I'm going to say negative one if not found. Let's go ahead and say print. And I want to say find return. C. Let's run this, see what it does. So, whoops, actually misspelled find there. Easy fix. So find return C, so it is at the 11th position. We didn't have to sit here and go one, two, three, four, and we'd be here all day doing that. Instead, we want the computer to do the work for us. So we know that's at the 11th position. Now, if we change this to just something, let's just do a single T. You see, find return negative one. So in this case, when you see negative one, you can say it's just simply not there. It's not going to return a zero because remember, zero is the starting position. So find is really, really cool. But if you're coming from another language, you're probably looking for index of, which is something totally different. So I'm going to say I equal str index. We're going to give it the same thing, the L. And now we want to this, and we're gonna say find return i. And let's see what this does. Now remember, we have this t in here. Where is t in here? It's, well, right there, but it's lowercase, not an uppercase. So it should return a negative one, or will it? Actually, no, it does not. Instead, it gives you what's called a value error, substring not found. This is a convenient way of saying, hey, that must exist or throw an error, something we're gonna cover in future videos. Just know that find will not return an error and index will return an error. So most of the time you're gonna want find, but if you're coming from another language, you think you want index and you really want find. Oh, super confusing sometimes. Will throw an error. Just wanna make sure we put that in there just in case. And let's switch this back. And you can see they both return 11 because we're looking for that comma. Remember, index will throw an error. Find will just simply return a negative one. Wrapping this up, let's go ahead and say, we want to create a new string from the substring. How do we do that? So we want to say x equals sdr, and we're going to slice that string. We're going to omit the starting position because we want to go from the beginning and we only want to go to the position of this comma. If that seems super confusing, let's slow way down. So we have a string and it says, hello world, comma, this is a string exclamation. So we're looking for this guy right here, which we found at the 11th position. And we're saying, okay, so from the very start, Hello world. Actually, just going to copy this whole thing right down here. Copy this, put it right here as a comment. There we go. So we're going to say so from the very beginning right here, all the way up to the position we find 
we want to create a string and call it x. Now we want to take that and just simply print it out. Hello world. Super, super simple. So quick recap. Strings are first class objects in Python. They are Unicode by default. They are UTF-8, although you can specify some other way of doing it. Google's your friend if you need to do that immediately. And you can do some really cool things like get the length, repeat it, replace it, split it, make sure it starts with, ends with, upper, lower, capitalization. You can slice it, dice it, do whatever you want to do. And you can search for or find things within the string. And if you need to throw an error, if it doesn't exist, you can use index, which I do not recommend because it's not really a good idea to throw an error in your code most of the time. And you can create your own strings from substrings very simply, very easily. I hope you enjoyed this video. You can find the source code out on github.com. If you need additional help, myself and thousands of other developers are hanging out in the Void Realms Facebook group. This is a large group with lots of developers, and we talk about everything technology related, not just the technology that you just watched. And if you want official training, I do develop courses out on udemy.com. This is official classroom style training. If you go out there and the course you're looking for is just simply not there, drop me a note. I'm either working on it or I will actually develop it. I will put a link down below for all three of those. And as always, help me help you. Smash that like and subscribe button. The more popular these videos become, the more I'll create and publish out on YouTube. Thank you for watching.